Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt, back with another Value Spirit video. Today, the particular spirit we're going to talk about is El Dorado 3-Year Rum. Um, this particular rum is produced by Demira Distilling Limited on the Plantation Diamond in Guyana. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are like me, did not <laughs> don't know a lot about Guyana. Uh, I recently, though, have done uh, some uh, research, and not just into the rum, uh, Guiana is located on the north shore of South America near the Atlantic slash Caribbean. It's next door to Venezuela. Now, Guiana has kind of an interesting story, more importantly, an interesting mix of people. Um, like a lot of other South American Caribbean countries, it was part of the slave trade, so there's a large African, African population. There's also a large Indian population in, from the Indian subcontinent, uh, at one time, Guiana was a British colony, same as India, and apparently the British brought over a lot of uh, Indians over to work and help build the new colony. Uh, I believe today roughly about a third of the population is of Indian heritage, 20-something percent African heritage, and then a mix of indigenous people and, and uh, other people. I want to say there's actually also like a small Chinese population there or what have you. Um, where I first heard about this was in the culinary world from what I gathered. They're doing some real interesting stuff in uh, Guyana in the culinary world. And, and again, with that kind of unique uh, mix of people, I can see where, you know, uh, food-wise, there'd be some unique choices. Um, this particular rum is produced in what's called the Demara region, Demara region and river. There's a river that runs through it and a region. Now this region was actually developed by the Dutch. Dutch were the original settlers in the area. And one thing the Dutch knew how to do was reclaim uh, marshland um, with the their dike system and whatever they had over in Holland. They were able to reclaim large chunks of land. Well they took that t technology to Ghana and they ended up uh, reclaiming land and turning it into sugarcane plantations. Well you know if you got sugarcane you're gonna have rum and by 1780, there were over 300 different distilleries in the area. Um, if, you, if you know anything about the slave trade, at one time, rum was almost kind of a currency. Uh, for a large portion of uh, history in the Western Hemisphere, rum was the predominant spirit. Uh, even in America, it was not bourbon. It was rum before we became a whiskey-drinking country. Um, over the years, though, however, these distilleries started going out of business. A lot of the plantations started to merge. And by 1942, there was only nine distilleries left in the area. And in 1999, the final merger happened, and we have one. And it's uh, Demura Distilling Limited, and they are working on the plantation diamond there in Guyana. So that's the last plantation. Now, what they've done over the years, which I find unique and a little different than the way we've done mergers and acquisitions here in the U.S., is, yes, of course, after a plantation merge, you would take over the land, you would take over the equipment, maybe keep some of the employees. But what they did was bring in the distilling equipment from these distilleries and their best hands. They brought in the the tools and the knowledge just to keep improving. And what they have now is a unique collection of stills. Now your average rum distillery is going to have some industrial column stills. They just kind of make a stripped down white rum with not a lot of flavor. You may have a pot still that you can make your aged rums and use to blend. But Demura has a really unique collection of stills. Uh, they have an 18th century four-column French Savier still. Uh, again, these, these things were built in a different time for a different style of rum. I think this is really cool. They have the last two wooden pot stills in the world. These things are 250 years old. They were used to make navy rum. We've talked about navy rums before. Um, up until, I believe, 1970, the British Navy gave their sailors a daily ration of rum. These Navy rums were higher proof. Again, had kind of a unique flavor profile. Uh, and last but not least, they had the last wooden continuous coffee still in the world. So I can just imagine all these different stills. You get these different flavors off of, you know, 
when they brought these stills in, they also brought the knowledge to use them. And now you have this array of stills that you can create these unique rums off each still and then blend them or whatever. I find the whole thing kind of fascinating, but I'm a nerd like that. Uh, real quick, some reviews on El Dorado 3 Year. Serious Eats ranks this as one of their top 10 best cheap rums. Uh, Flavar lists the brand El Dorado just as the entire brand is one of the best rum brands under $50. Uh, this particular rum has won silver in the 2006 and 2007 International Wine and Spirits Competition. It won gold at the International Review of Spirits. And one of its sister products, the uh, eight-year rum, is listed by Inside Hooks as one of the best cheap rums out there. El Dorado has an excellent name for producing high-quality rums at a value price, and we like that. So enough about El Dorado. Let's give it a try. Now, real quick before we try this, El Dorado likes it. This is a three-year rum, and you can tell it's, it's pretty clear. Uh, spent three years in the barrel, but they use a charcoal filtration process to clear it but it still picked up some of that oak. It still uses that oak to filter itself, too, so it's interesting to see how that will come out on the palate. All right, a little sweetness on the nose. You don't quite get the normal rum burn, you know, just that low-grade, you know, white rums. They're made from industrial stills. You really don't um, pick that up as much. All right, let's give it a try. Oh, that's nice. There's, there's a little more body to this than a generic light rum. You know, of course, you're going to get a little sweet punch, sugar cane. What do you expect? Uh, but it's really smooth. There's a certain character to this. Um, even though it's a white rum, there seems to almost be a little bit of a body. I mean, it's light, but it... There seems to be a little body. This goes down easy. Um, actually, for a white rum, I think I could sip this. I really could. It, it, it goes down easy, but it has some flavor. It has something to it. It's not It's not the sugar cane version of vodka, which a lot of these uh, light rums come to be. And to a certain extent, I get it. If, if we're just making industrial batches of pina coladas, mojitos, <laughs> you know, but... This is a really nice rum. This is something I could drink with. I could drink with soda and a little bit of lime. Um, I could. I could. I could drink this on the rocks. Um, I definitely probably wouldn't want to mix this with a cola. That, again, that's kind of a generic drink for cheaper rum. This is nice. This is something I could really appreciate. Um, now I would use this in some cocktails because again, quality ingredients make a quality cocktail. I'm not saying don't ever put you know good spirits and cocktails. I'm, I'm definitely all for that. And I can see this would make a very nice uh, mojito. But also, too, if we're going to make a blueberry rhubarb mojito or something like that, well, slow down. But a nice simple mojito with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of lime, some mint. Yeah, this would be real nice. No, that is a nice, that is just a nice, easy drinking rum. I, I could, seriously, I could just drink this straight. And that's not something you hear from a lot of uh, white rums. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it'll let YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave me in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.